Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Kristen D'Amadeo, and I'm a space technology communicator at NASA's Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia. Today, we have an amazing panel for you who I'll introduce here in just a moment. Each of these panelists works support NASA's Artemis program, which will send science experiments and technology demonstrations to the surface of the moon, land the first woman and the next man on the surface of the moon, and establish a sustained presence all of which will help us send astronauts to Mars one day. It takes a huge team of people with a wide variety of knowledge and skills to have a successful mission. NASA isn't just astronauts and scientists. We have engineers, technicians, artists, accountants, lawyers, educators, writers, and more. Let's meet some of these awesome people behind our Artemis mission. We've got Amber Favre, Jose Ortiz, Nina Tappan, and Carrie Scott with us today. We're going to take a few minutes for the panelists to introduce themselves and then we'll kick off the questions. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Amber Favre. I am the deputy lead for the Langley SLS aerodynamics team and I um, am so happy to work on the SLS program, which stands for Space Launch System, uh, which is the rocket or family of rockets that will carry those capsules with astronauts and cargo up to the moon and beyond eventually. And hello all, my name is Jose uh, Ortiz. I'm a systems engineer and I've been with, with NASA since 1981. It's been a, a long time. I'm originally from Puerto Rico uh, and that's what I studied uh, engineering. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer. Uh, so I, well, I got my my uh, bachelor degree, and I really owe my career in engineering to a, a high school math teacher that really sent me through the uh, world of mathematics. So I am supporting the Gateway program, uh, and that is the uh, kind of space station that's going to be around the moon that is going to serve as the uh, point for assembly of the of a lander and. and and uh, missions from there to the moon. We'll talk more later. Thanks. Hi, I'm Nina Tappan, AKA Salty and Shrink Rep Queen. I do have a few nicknames I've acquired. I've worked for NASA for 28 years. I've supported 36 space flight projects. And yes, I do keep a list. I am a program specialist specializing in life cycle logistics. Um, used to, we used to call that project logistics. And I am very excited to be here today and tell you about what we do. Hi, I'm Kerry Scott. I'm the uh, deputy principal investigator for the SciFly team. That's the scientifically calibrated in-flight imagery group here at NASA Langley. And we are responsible for collecting engineering quality data sets. Um, for the space launch system and uh, other vehicles that go up to space and come back. Great, thank you all so much. Let's get started with some questions. Um, STEM jobs are a growing field. 15 of the 20 fastest growing occupations require significant math and science preparation. So um, what helped you prepare uh, for your job at NASA and how did you get your start? Let me go with that. Um, I, uh, like, like I mentioned in my introduction, I had a very good teacher, uh, math teacher, that I recently he passed away. Um, but he was so good. He took the time. Uh, uh, he used uh, he taught me the trigonometry and all the uh, the basics um, before I went to engineering school. I didn't have to take the pre calculus. I went straight into calculus, and he he gave me a very strong foundation to engage in engineering, I finished my, my degree. So um, then I always wanted to work at NASA. I mean, it was it was it was always on TV, you know, of the, the Apollo program and, and the excite the excitement of exploration. So um, I had the opportunity to become a co-op back in those days. It was called the pro a co-op program. And um, it was a, a couple of us that came back in 1981 to NASA Langley as a co-op student, and um, and that really gave me a taste of what NASA was about, because I worked in some of the um, wind tunnels at Langley, 
uh, collecting some data for uh, for those for those tunnels. So uh, I went back to school and I finished my degree and sure enough, I had I, I had an offer from from NASA to come back to work. So, so that's really how I got my my foot into NASA and my interest. And I'm really, really happy to be here as, as, part, as part of this team. Thank you. I think Nina, did you want to respond? Yeah, I did. Um, I've, my experience was a little bit different. I came to NASA later in life after I had already started a family and I was kind of tired of just working jobs. I really wanted a career. And I actually went uh, back to the community college, uh, Thomas Nelson Community College, and uh, started in electronics and got into the co-op program also that they had for technicians. And from there, I went, was accepted into the NASA apprentice program, which was a six year apprentice program where we took additional college courses and also hands on because I always liked working with my hands and how I got in from electron. I never did electronics. I got a degree in it, but I never did it. <laughs> when I came to NASA, they said they came to me and said, we really need some technicians to work in the laser lab. Would you be willing to learn that? And I said, I didn't know anything about lasers. And NASA said, that's OK, We're, we'll teach you. We'll, we'll get you the classes and we will teach you. So you one thing you have to do is be really open minded. And from that, um, I, I said, yes, of course, I'll try that. And from there, um, doors just kept opening. NASA, different uh, managers from NASA would come to me and say, would you be willing to try this job? We think you'll be really good at this. And so I actually moved around a lot um, from lasers to, you know, and eventually getting into logistics. And I love logistics moving, you know, the whole challenge of it, the multitasking. But my biggest advice to you is to be open minded when you go to an employer, be open minded. And maybe a manager sees something in you that they think that you're going to be really good at and take a chance because it's, it has really worked out well for me. Great. Thank you so much, Amber. Yeah, um, my, I guess, how I came to it might be a little different. Um, I wasn't as much inspired in high school. I had a, a math teacher. I wanted to skip the AP classes and go to the community college and take community college classes instead because they were free and I was super poor. And <laughs> it seemed like a better way than to pay for AP courses. So uh, he told me, I don't think you'll do very well. I don't I just don't think, you know, that you'll be able to be an engineer or to do those classes. So I went ahead and did uh, calculus one and two while I was still in high school. And then I went to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University for aerospace engineering. So I I kind of just went off in the whole let me just prove you wrong uh, direction. <laughs> Very stubborn. So I mean, I think that's that's initially what really pushed me to to work really hard. And you know, I really enjoyed being at Embry Riddle, um, just being really uh, really immersed in the aerospace and aeronautical culture, and really great place to learn. And then I went on into grad school and came out here to Langley and worked with Old Dominion University. And I got my start at um, the Langley full scale wind tunnel, which has now been torn down and decommissioned and all that. But that is where I started my career as a, an intern during my undergrad and then a graduate research assistant in graduate school. And uh, I, I think Langley is just uh, such an amazing place to work. And, you know, I, I feel like all those all those educational institutions did great things for me, but what I've learned here at Langley and just through communication with many great mentors and all the great people who are um, just passionate about their work here has been really, really helpful. Wonderful. Wonderful. And, and Carrie? Hi, uh, yeah, I, I have a, I guess, a similar story to, uh, to Nina. I was in a different career altogether. Um, actually, it was in education. Um, and was really enjoying uh, being a teacher. I taught high school and junior high students. And uh, I guess I owe um, some of this to a particular student who um, one day during a question and answer session, I was asking my students what kind of career did they envision for themselves and what did they always want to be? And one student asked me, well, what about you, Mr. Scott? What, what did you always want to be? And I told him I wanted to be an astronaut. <laughs> and <laughs> He looked at me and very seriously said, well, why don't you do that? <laughs> and um, I thought pretty hard about it. It kind of stuck with me. And so I decided to go back to school and, um, you know, I had a physics degree and I decided to go back to school for, for the engineering 
uh, education and um, selected some internships and, and here I am. So I, I do owe at least some of the credit to, to my students while I, I was a teacher. That's incredible. I love it. <laughs> Thank you all for sharing. It sounds like a lot of preparation um, went into your careers here. So um, it started early with a lot of you too. It sounds like in high school and college, not everybody. Um, but what were you like in high school? Um, does anyone want to talk about um, what your high school experience was like? And is there anything that you would tell your uh, teenage high school self now that you're at NASA and doing what you're doing? Amber? All right. Um, so I I think, well, in high school, it's, uh, I was the captain of my dance team. I was a dancer. I danced from the time I was three all the way into college. I actually started a dance team at Embry-Riddle because there wasn't a dance program there at all, surprisingly. Not really, but... <laughs> um, and so I was really into all of that. I was in the art classes. I was really into all the things that I think at the time I felt like I should be into. Um, there was a technology lab with a little tiny wind tunnel in it. And I actually didn't take those classes because I didn't feel like I fit in in that um, in that environment, in that group, whatever. So uh, I would say I think, you know, looking back and talking to my 16 year old self, I think that I would just encourage myself to like do the things that I was interested in, no matter who was involved and to just go for it and, you know, be that awkward person and just kind of own it, I guess, instead of being trying so hard to fit in where you thought you were supposed to fit in. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Jose. Yeah, uh, so going back to those days, I was I was very shy. I was very shy. Uh, but I really enjoyed studying. So I, I was like, uh, if you, you know, if the, if the word nerd existed back then, I was one of those. Uh, I was always studying at school. Uh, one thing that I really liked was uh, playing chess. So I, I, I always uh, wanted to challenge um, anybody, and I really challenged the teachers. Uh, so I learned a lot um, uh, from, you know, from some of my teachers, uh, some of the basic movements of, of chess. But again, you know, just just um, uh, very shy, uh, did not not very outgoing. I, I uh, was one time I was um, part of a, of, a, of a directors of a, of a class and I really didn't. It, it wasn't really for me to be uh, involved, you know, in activities like that. I was more into the books, things like that. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Oh, Carrie, go ahead, please. Oh, I, I just. Uh... I was probably less interested in school and more interested in extracurricular stuff. Um, so I would probably tell myself two things. Um, one is to focus on studies um, uh, as early as possible. And two would be to uh, invest in certain companies. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd all we would all do that if we could talk to our uh, younger selves. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so money can be a huge motivator for people, not for everybody. And college and STEM majors out there right now are out earning other college grads. But like I said, money doesn't motivate anybody. What motivated all of you? What inspired you um, to end up here at NASA? Carrie. Oh, Amber. I don't, oh, sorry. Everyone raised their hand at once. <laughs> um, let's start with Nina. She didn't answer the last question. OK, like I said before, I was looking for a career and um, what I found was I enjoy challenges. I enjoy when somebody says you can't do something or that's too hard or, you know, you come up with a new way and it's you can't do that. And one thing that's really cool about NASA is that it's very diverse and they're willing to, um, you know, listen to new ideas and try new things. And so I really, uh, really thrive on that. I love it when they when you come up with a new idea and they say it won't work and, it, you know, it works great. Right. <laughs> and so I really enjoy working with a different um, different group of people. And we work across the agency, not just people at Langley, but other centers. I have built some really strong bonds. That's why I have these nicknames. 
which is a whole nother story, but um, it's, I, I really enjoy the diversity and the openness. Everybody seems to have an open mind and they're willing to listen and try new things. And so for me, that's really fun. Great, thank you. Jose? Oh, sure. Uh, so when I when I was in my fourth year of engineering, electrical engineering, I, I had the opportunity to go to Hewlett Packard, Texas Instruments. I had those offers as well. But then NASA said, well, we'll pay you for your graduate school. And that that did it for me because I wanted to continue studying. So uh, so when I first came in, I immediately signed up for, for my, my master's degree uh, and NASA picked up the bill and that was great for me. <laughs> All right. That's great. Gary? Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's elements of, of all that here with me as well. Um, a, a big one for me, though, is the idea um, of contributing to the advancement of the human race, you know, our, our knowledge, our exploration. Um, in some small way, uh, you know, I know that what I do for the agency is contributing to the advancement of our species, and that's pretty exciting to me. <laughs> um, it, you know, it, it helps that NASA is an awesome place to work. It helps that I love spaceships and space travel since I can remember words. <laughs> um, and it helps that we get to actually work with all the cool companies who are involved in space travel. And um, right now, I think we're looking at, you know, we're, we're right in the middle of kind of a new space age, a, a, a reinvigorated space race, so to speak. And, um, you know, Mars is the target. It's it's just very exciting to be a part of that. So I feel very fortunate um, that, that I get to contribute in that way. That's beautifully said. Thank you. And Amber. Yeah, I, um, I actually was here for grad school and then left and actually started my official career with Lockheed Martin and working there was a great place to launch my career. Um, but coming back and, and being here again, and even my experience in grad school, one of the most powerful things about NASA is that it's, I would say 90 some percent of the people I work with, this job is their dream job. They have spent their career working to get where they are and they would not want to be somewhere else. And uh, there's just something about showing up to a team full of people every day who really want to be there and who absolutely think this is the best place that they could be working. So it's it's so powerful to work with just these amazing people who really, really love their jobs. So I think that's the biggest thing for me. That's great. And I, in my job as a communicator, I get to interview people like you all every day meeting new people across the agency and their enthusiasm, like you said, Amber, your enthusiasm, it's contagious and it is definitely a motivator and something that is super exciting about coming to work or working from home every day. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you all. Um, so work is a big part of life, but it's not entire. It's not your entire life. So does anyone want to share anything that you do outside of work? Any hobbies or, um, I don't know, hidden talents or anything like that that you want to talk about? Jose? So, of course. Um, so I play the guitar and that that's something that I usually do during the day. You know, I, uh, after a meeting or something, a very tense meeting or something, I just grab the guitar and play a couple of thong songs. But in addition to that, I like to do repair work. So uh, maintenance on homes uh, and anything that breaks, uh, that's kind of a hobby on the side. And um, and I really enjoy doing that, fixing things. Um, so. Great, thank you. I wish I was good at fixing things. <laughs> Amber? So I'm a yoga teacher and I actually own a yoga studio. So I have a whole other career, I guess, that's like on the side. But um, I really love yoga. It's been a life changing and um, life saving tool for me as far as staying balanced and uh, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, all of those things. And then um, being able to offer that in our community locally through the studio has been also very awesome. Great, thank you so much. Um, Jose mentioned his guitar playing. A lot of people uh, find inspiration in the arts. So um, are any of you readers or music fans? Uh, what's the last book you read? 
or what kind of music do you listen to while you're working? Anybody want to share? Carrie? Yeah, of course, I like science fiction. <laughs> um, I, I, the last book I read was uh, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. Uh, he's the same author who wrote uh, Artemis and The Martian. So it's uh, a bit different than those. Um, if you like science fiction, I would say maybe give it a shot. Great, thanks. And Amber? Yeah, um, so I read a lot of yoga and kind of self-help style books, I guess, and um, and occasionally some sci-fi and other things. But the last book I read uh, was actually Untamed by Glennon Doyle, uh, which was an amazing, um, kind of a feminist book, <laughs> but really great. Um, and uh, when I'm working, I, I really like to listen to kind of uh, meditation music. There's a playlist on Spotify called uh, Deep Thought, I think, and it's it's kind of like these binaural beats and really great for getting into code and things that I might be working on that require me to not hear words in the background, maybe. Um, and if I'm doing words, I really love Bird Talker, so um, kind of folk rock type music that I, I really get into. So. Great, thank you. <clears throat> So this is my last question to you all, and I hope that you will all answer this. Um, lastly, what excites you most about the Artemis program, returning to the moon, sending the first woman, sending the first person of color, um, the prospect of landing humans on Mars in the not too distant future? Um, you talked a little bit about what excites you about working at NASA, but what specifically about Artemis, um, which you're all contributing to, is, is exciting? Okay, Amber. <clears throat> yeah, so I would say um, just all of it. I mean, it's it, it, if you think about how quickly we went from the Wright brothers to everybody flying on jets all the time to go on their vacations and all those things, how quickly that happened, and then we kind of had a stall out, and you know, and and it, we've made it. We went to the moon, but it's it's. If you think about the the steps and the massive pace that we were moving at, now we're moving, you know, we're moving in the direction of big, much bigger things. Um, we've got commercial space flight happening, and I realize that some people feel like that's not a great thing because we're making space accessible to the ultra rich. But um, remember when we first started using jets to fly around the world, that was the ultra rich that were tra traveling that way. And who knows, maybe within my lifetime, people will be hopping on, you know, a, a space flight to travel from one part of the world to the other very quickly. Um, so we, uh, Artemis is just so important to creating the technology that's really going to push those advances. What we do at NASA really affects everybody in their everyday life. And it's so exciting to be a part of such a big effort that's going to make that huge impact. So. Wonderful. Thank you. Jose? Yeah, I, I'm always amazed of the uh, talent um, uh, and the people that work um, and the creativity that they all have. Because to be able to design something that a place that you've never been before, um, you got to have a way to do that design on paper or models before you can start testing. Uh, and, and it's just exciting to be uh, working on, on, on those new things. Um, you know, there's a big difference, you know, um, uh, in technology. Um, it's advanced quite a bit, but we still need to make sure that it all, it all works. But, um, but the people make the difference for me. Um, and I and I just any piece of the Artemis program, you know, the SLS, the uh, the lander, the gateway, and uh, I was part of the Orion um, a program working on the launch abort system. That whole system is is very sophisticated. It's uh, it's, it's it's a lot of work, a lot of um, very talented people working on that uh, on both sides, NASA and the uh, contractor team, to put a thing like that together. But I'm just honored and privileged to be part of, of, of the Artemis program. Thank you. Nina? I uh, have some of the same feelings as Jose. And for me, it's not why are we going there, but why not? 
I mean, and I think it's incredible, just incredible that we're sending a diverse crew because America and the world is so diverse. And so, you know, we need to send send how we are, you know, the people that we are. But it, it does take an incredible amount of, um, you know, NASA is a lot of times a one stop shop. We dream it. We think it. We plan it. We build it. We launch it. And so for me, it's just exciting to do what some people say can't be done. And, you know, who would have thought 30 years ago that we have Velcro? I mean, like, you know, if somebody said, hey, why not? We love Velcro. You know, we love super glue. Think of all these things, your cell phone, all of these space technologies that came out of, you know, uh, spinoffs that NASA and other um, government agencies have come up with. So, you know, why not go there and why stop at Mars? That's that's great. Incredible. I love it. Carrie. Yeah, totally. Why not? Um, yeah, I, I, for me, it's really exciting just as a space geek, the fact that, you know, we're putting things, we're, we're going to Mars, we're going to be there. Um, but the, the real, I guess, excitement is um, to imagine my son growing up in a time where walking on Mars is normal or doing, you know, getting a job in, you know, as a space mechanic or something is regular. I, I just, I, to me, that's really exciting. Um, to kind of inspire the imagination of, you know, the next generations. Um, you know, I guess, you know, they say one of my favorite quotes is imagination is more important than knowledge. So, you know, we don't know yet what cool things are going to come from discoveries that are made, uh, but hopefully, you know, we get to kind of inspire and ignite the imagination of, of this next generation that's coming online. So I, that's that's the really exciting part for me. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for your time and providing all of your insight. Um, I want to open it up to any closing thoughts that anyone would like to share. <clears throat> anything I didn't ask you that you want to talk about your job or anything like that, please. Nina. Okay, so just to clarify, in case you don't know what a life cycle logistics person is, we spend years and years developing these uh, satellites and rockets, and we spend millions of dollars many a lot of the time, and you have hundreds of thousands of people that have, have built these. So if you don't lift it, if you don't package it, if you don't transport it correctly, then it's all for nothing. That's what I do. I develop the plans. I decide how we're going to lift it, what crane we're going to use, whether we're going to put it on a truck or an airplane, how are we going to get it to the launch site, how are we going to get there safely so that we have not wasted all of these years. So that's what a life cycle logistics person does, and, and I love it. <laughs> Definitely something probably a lot of people didn't know was a job opportunity at NASA. <laughs> Jose? So I just want to offer uh, some words of encouragement, you know, to the young uh, audience that's watching us. Uh, just continue. Um, uh, I think Nina said something uh, earlier that is very true. Have an open mind and also um, discipline. And you, you're going to have to work. You're going to have to work and work hard. And, 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 and you know, you have to make sure you uh, you do well in your classes. You you get your good grades because that's going to put you on the top and 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 it's going to open doors for you. Well said, Jose. Thank you. Carrie? Yeah, that's that's great advice. Um I I think uh something that really helped me along uh cuz I'll be honest, um some classes I didn't score in the top percentages, but um some things that really helped me along in my career were internships. Um I would say um, getting as much internship experience as you can um, from as early as you can uh, for from as many places as you can is is going to be really beneficial. Um, part of that process is learning what you don't want to do, and part of it is uh, building your skill sets. Um, some of which you know you may not think are important, uh, but will definitely can translate you know into um, career success. So um, you know. Keep working hard and you know put your best foot forward in everything that you do and eventually you'll get to where you want to go. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. That's great. And Amber. 
Yeah, I guess um, I I wanted to just point out how important it is to get used to and really comfortable with failure because that's it's what we do. We just try things and see what works. And that means we fail a lot of times before we figure out the right way. And um, really, science is about proving your hypothesis wrong. So sometimes you're like on a mission to create failure, right? So um, I just, I feel like when we're young, we all have this avoidance of failure and that's kind of ingrained in us. So it's it's probably really a good idea to just get used to failure and know that each failure puts you one step closer to that success that you're looking for. Wonderful. That was really well said as well. Thank you all so much. I just really appreciate your time. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you to our viewers for joining us today. I hope you can see yourself working at NASA one day. There are plenty of ways to get involved through STEM engagement, internships, and careers and jobs. So please visit nasa.gov for more information on how you can get involved. Thank you.